Hello friends, we are in the fifth week of our course on literature and life and we are going to deal with W. H. Davies poem Leisure. He is a British poet, we will see the objectives, his life and writings and then read his poem A Plain Life and discuss leisure that we have chosen for this course. We look into the thematic, formal, linguistic and literary aspects of this poem. We will also examine certain human relationships and reflections on life. Thereafter, we will read one more poem by Davis that is called A Happy Life. Then we will compare this with Wordsworth's poem The World is Too Much with Us. Finally, we will see some takeaways and summarize the poem. What are the objectives of this presentation? To learn about the life and writings of the super tram poet. William Henry Davis. To read Davis poem A Plain Life and then analyze his poem Leisure. To appreciate the need for leisure in human life and our relation to nature. To look into the thematic, formal, linguistic and literary aspects of the poem that we have chosen that is leisure. To examine the elements of human relationships and reflections on life with reference to the poem to compare Davies's leisure with Wordsworth's poem The World is Too Much With Us. And finally, to relax and care for ourselves by spending time for and with nature. There is no substitute for nature. To understand our own nature, we have to get in touch with the great nature around us. What kind of life did Davies live? His full name is William Henry Davis. He was born in 1871 and he died in 1940. He was born in Wales, one province of United Kingdom. That is why we call him a Welsh poet. He never settled in life comfortably because he always travelled around different places, particularly he travelled widely in the US and Canada. He met with an accident in one of his journeys and lost his leg. He is generally recognized as a popular working class poet. Strangely, he was appreciated by George Bernard Shaw who was a towering figure at the time for he considered Davis a real poet of established reputation. Davis had published several volumes and somehow George Bernard Shaw liked his poems. Because of this liking for Davis poem, he wrote a preface to our author's autobiography which is called the autobiography of a super tramp. If you want to know the secret of being young, you should look at this quotation very carefully. As long as I love beauty, I am young. Look at people who always appear young. They would love nature, they would love beauty, they will love truth, good. So, if we love truth, beauty and good, we can always appear young in our heart and also in our body. Davies has published several volumes of poetry, prose and fiction. Some of his poetry volumes are The Soul's Destroyer and other poems, Nature Poems and others, Songs of Joy and others. The Bird of Paradise and other poems, 40 new poems, poems from 1930 to 31 and the last collection we are mentioning here is The Loneliest Mountain. The prose piece is about his autobiography that is the autobiography of a super tram. He lived a life of a tramp and he is called a super tramp because there was none other like this. His fiction is The True Traveller published in 1912. The first poem that we are going to read is A Plain Life. We have drawn your attention to rhyme scheme by highlighting them in blue letters. On the other hand, we have some words highlighted in red color to draw our attention to certain words that he uses and contrast them with the other side that is the sun green mornings and all that, we will see more of it in the next slide. Let us read it now. No idle goal since this fine sun my friend, 
is no mean miser but doth freely spend. One more thing that we have mentioned here is Spandi and I am. The poem begins in Spandi, no idol and the first line ends in my friend that is I am. So, you will find this kind of metrical patterns throughout the poem. Some are Spandi, some are Perik, some are I am, some are Traki. So, this kind of variation is there in the poem to add beauty to the poem. Let us begin again. No idle gold since his fine son my friend is no mean miser but that freely spend. No precious stones since these green mornings show without a charge their pearls wherever I go. No lifeless books since birds with their sweet tongues will read aloud to me their happier songs. No painted scenes since clouds can change the skies a hundred times a day to please my eyes. No headstrong wine since when I drink the spring into my eager ears will softly sing. No surplus clothes since every simple beast can teach me to be happy with the least. There are just 12 lines. Most of these lines are couplets. Most of the lines are again in iambic pentameter. We will see some more of the contrast that we mentioned earlier in the next slide. We are going to read the poem again with specifically focusing on the contrast that we have in the same line. No idle gold since this fine sun my friend. So, you can see the contrast between gold and sun like this. You can see the contrast between stones and mornings, books and birds, scenes and clouds, wine and drinking and clothes and beast. When these different ideas are brought together, they make lot of sense to draw our attention to the kind of plain simple life that uh, Davis lived and he wants us to live. No idle goal since his fine son my friend is no mean miser but that freely spend. No precious stones since these green mornings show without a charge their pearls wherever I go. No lifeless books since birds with their sweet tongues will read aloud to me their happier songs. No painted scene since clouds can change the skies a hundred times a day to please my eyes. No headstrong wine since when I drink the spring into my eager ears will softly sing. No surplus clothes since every simple beast can teach me to be happy with the least. So, all these things that we pursue in our life, gold, stones, precious stones, books, scenes, particularly in painting, art wine and clothes, all these pursuits when we compare them with whatever we have in abundance in nature like sunlight or the green morning or sweet birds in the sense birds singing sweet songs, clouds with so many kinds of paintings changing every moment, not just one painting forever, but keeps on changing to draw our attention. When you look at the sky, you will always feel happy to see the changes that happen in the clouds. Similarly, we have drinking of water from the spring. While we drink the water, we can also see or hear the sound of the spring water flowing and then clothes. This may look a primitive idea. Bees do not wear clothes. Why should human being? That is a kind of question that may be asked with this primitive outlook. But then simpler clothes, minimum clothes are enough. That is the whole idea of this poem. Now, we move on to the second poem that we have chosen to discuss in this course that is called Leisure. This particular poem was published in Songs of Joy and Others in 1911. This is one of the most popular poems of W. H. Davis. Again, this is anthologized and set to music by young people around the world. A poem of 14 lines in 7 rhyming couplets is what we have in this poem. This poem is rather realistic and anti-materialistic. It has actually some romantic overtones praising nature and looking up to nature for models for human beings. This poem has come to be called a cultural icon because it has drawn the attention of people all over the world. Here is the poem. Let us read it. What is his life you full of care? We have no time to stand and stare. No time to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep of cows. No time to see when woods we pass where squirrels hide their nuts in grass. 
no time to see in broad daylight streams full of stars like skies at night no time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet how they can dance no time to wait till her mouth can enrich that smile her eyes began your poor life disease you full of care we have no time to stand and stare let me try to sing it for you what is this life you full of care we have no time to stand and stare no time to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep or cows no time to see when woods we pass where squirrels hide their nuts in grass no time to see in broad daylight streams full of stars like skies at night no time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet how they can dance no time to wait till her mouth can and reach that smile her eyes began your poor life this is if full of care we have no time to stand and stare hope you enjoyed it go to youtube you will watch several versions of this singing with music you will love it we have indicated the rhyme scheme in this slide a a b b c c d d e e f f a a the circle is completed it's a kind of cycle all are couplets as you can see again you can see some emphasis on no time no time throughout the poem and also you can see the verbs to stand and stare to stand to see to see to turn to wait and finally to stand and stare just to stand there and look at life leisurely with a relaxed mind that we don't have time for let's read it once again what is this life you full of care we have no time to stand and stare no time to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep or cows no time to see when woods we pass where squirrels hide their nuts in grass no time to see in broad daylight streams full of stars like skies at night no time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet how they can dance no time to wait till her mouth can and reach that smile her eyes began Your poor life, this is. If full of care, we have no time to stand and stare. Let's see the thematic contrast in this poem. The whole poem is all about spending a careful life and spending a carefree life, not careless life. Please note that a careful life is full of worries, anxieties, thinking about the future, running after something, particularly materialistic resources, and a carefree life is. something which you enjoy and careless life is something you don't don't care for anything you don't care for yourself or you don't care for anything even material things so we have a carefree life that refers to enjoying life and living your life to the full we have time and eternity no time we don't have time we have abundant time still we don't find time time is eternal we participate in this time and also we don't have rest because our time is limited in this world we always run after some kind of work or other we pursue something and we forget about ourselves and there is a contrast between day and night probably something to do with uh, knowledge and ignorance we also have nature on the one hand and human beings on the other we have love and hate in this poem if you love yourself you will not hate nature if you love yourself you will not hate your fellow beings but if you love material aspects you will hate everything including yourself and finally what happens to human beings is we hate the materialistic pursuits that we followed for life there is a contrast between beauty and ugliness there is always beauty in nature any aspect of nature is beauty but we have no time to see this but we see only the ugly aspects of material life so the life that we don't have time to enjoy is poor life and if we can spare some time to enjoy our life that becomes rich life and that rich life is not measured by the wealth the knowledge that we have acquired but by the kind of quality time that we spend with nature for ourselves so the entire poem is all about the conflict between materialism on the one hand and spiritualism or idealism on the other hand imagine Davis wrote this poem in 1910 and published it in 
and now we are in the 21st century after 110 years imagine now our plight we still keep on running after so many things and we do not have enough time to care for ourselves. Luckily the pandemic came and forces to rest at home and we have learnt a little bit of our value of leisure. Let us see the form of the poem. It is a sonnet because it has 14 lines. It has a different pattern like seven couplets that is a different story. It deals with a lyrical and subjective experience of the poet suggesting that we should look into nature and enjoy ourselves. The rhyme scheme is A A B B C C D D E E F F and A A. What began ends the poem. The rhythm of this poem is iambic that means unstressed and stressed. We normally refer to this as da dum. We have an example here in my friend from the first line. My is unstressed, friend is stressed that is why we have it here as an example. You can look at many such words and syllables in the poem. The meter of the poem is tetrameter because we have only 4 feet in each line. As we mentioned sometime earlier, when we have less number of feet in a poem, the space of the poem will be somewhat stronger, faster. This is a sonnet, but not a Shakespearean sonnet with that rhyme scheme of A B, A B, C D, C D, E F, E F and G G. G G is a couplet at the end of the Shakespearean poem. This is also not like the Miltonic sonnet with that is rhyme scheme A B A B A B A B C D E C D E or D C E D C E. There are different variations of ending the poem. But our poem by Davis is not like Shakespearean or not like Miltonic sonnet. This is a unique poem in its own way. This has a structure of a problem and solution. The problem that is addressed in this poem is about lack of leisure or rest for human beings. The solution is simple, rest, relax, look at nature, enjoy yourself, sing, dance, be happy with yourself. When we come to the linguistic analysis of the poem, we can see some question answered. We can also look into the diction and the conditional clause that is used in the poem two times. The major question that we have in the poem is what is his life? And there is a qualification if you do not have time to enjoy life. The answer is our life is full of care and so it is a poor life. If you want to enrich it that is additional qualification. If you want to enrich it we have to take rest, relax. The diction of the poem is simple, very simple. The poet has used all simple words. They are all monosyllabic words that means single syllable words all is an example of this monosyllabic word. We do not have many disyllabic or polysyllabic words in this poem. Even the sentence structure is very simple and only one conditional clause is commonly used here that is if conditional clause. It is used two times one at the beginning one at the end. It is all about condition. If we do not have time, if we have no time to stand and stare then what is the use of this life? That condition is made only to ask this question and that question actually gives a reply stay home at least weekends enjoy yourself. There are several aspects of literary devices in this poem. We can look at a rhetorical question at the beginning what is this life you full of care we have no time to stand and stare that means it has an implicit answer take rest find some time for yourself. There is a case of no time which is repeated through the poem. It is repeated 7 times almost in all stanzas. They are couplets actually, we do not need to call them stanzas just because they are presented separately as 2 lines each, we call them stanzas. Otherwise, it is a simple sonnet. We have an example of simile in like stars at night. Then, of course, the personification is found in beauty, which is presented as a woman dancing for us. We have also many cases of alliteration, stand and stare, beneath the boughs, streams full of stars. One case of polysyndeton we can see in use of and three times in the poem. Let us see the human relationships. There is a speaker, he tells all about nature, there is no other human being in this poem, but then he brings a whole world into the poem, he addresses a whole world. 
the speaker of the poem uses the pronoun we he includes everybody within the poem he doesn't say i don't have time he says we don't have time so whatever he says is applicable to him and the whole of humanity the meaning of this expression to stand and to see is to relate to relax actually it begins with to rest to relax and probably later to relate to enjoy we don't have time to look at our surroundings including other human beings we simply close our eyes today with our devices like cell phone we look at the phone while walking while driving a bike or a car even while riding a bicycle without a care for anything in the world whether we will fall into a puddle or a ditch or uh, we will hit somebody we do not care at all we think we are intelligent we are uh, very brilliant but then only when we meet with accidents we realize we are very poor in our attention we do not have time for each other and most importantly we do not care for ourselves it is so pathetic to see that people do not care for their own body and now they have to go to hospitals very often particularly for cleaning their body using the dialysis machine. Nature has given us the best machine in our body, but we do not care and uh, damage it and then we have to go to the hospital to clean our or detox our body. We pursue something at the cost of the self and human and natural relationships. We forget ourselves because we become mad in the pursuit of material things like job, education, wealth, property, so many other things which do not truly give us pleasure or leisure. At the end most of the people who have gathered so much of money at the end when they meet with death nothing can prevent them from dying. During the pandemic we would have seen how many people were gasped of breath. They wanted simply air if they had learned to breathe well beforehand that is another thing we have to notice we are not even breathing properly and our body is not doing the job of breathing properly then how can we live properly carefully. Here are some reflections on life we have to realize that like food, water, leisure is a basic human need we cannot live without water we cannot live without oxygen similarly we cannot also live without leisure. We need the freedom to relax and to do our own things in our own pace. We do not have to hurry all the time. We need to live free from all cares of modern life to buy a property, to get a job and then work only for these, nothing else. We need some money, true. We need a job, true. We need a shelter, true. But then only working for these basic needs is not good enough. We have to go beyond this. What is the meaning of life? What is time? These are the greatest questions that are raised in this poem. It is not easy to answer that question. What is life? You can say positive life, negative life, indifferent life. Beyond that, does life have some meaning for us? So, when we read these poets and writers, we understand their own experience of life. The meaning of life lies in rest, relaxation and enjoyment, helping people enjoy their life. How do you spend this life and time? We, you are using that economic metaphor, spending time, using time, again utilitarian point of view. Maybe if we say how we live our life, perhaps that will tell us we are doing something only for ourselves. Here are some answers to watch the bows, sheep, cows, squirrels, grass, stars, night sky, beauty, smile, etc. Ask many people this simple question, when did you look at the sky last time? People have forgotten their looking up the sky. To stay, to flow, to go with nature is the concept of positive psychology. Literature, great literature has that positive energy. We have such an energy in this poem. To realize the insignificance of man on earth in the grand scheme of life. The whole earth does not care for man or human beings. Animals do not care for us, plants do not care for us. It is we 
who are possessing things, imposing ourselves on everything, imposing ourselves on other fellow beings. To live peacefully in harmony with nature and with ourselves should be our goal, peace and harmony. We should learn how to live our own life harmoniously, peacefully with ourselves, with our fellow human beings and with the rest of the universe. We have another poem by W. H. Davis, it is called A Happy Life, Leisure. He asks that question, what is this life? Here, he asks such a question and gives us an answer to a happy life. Oh, what a life is this I lead, far from the hum of human greed, where crows like merchants dressed in black go leisurely to work and back, where swallows leap and dive and float, and cuckoos sound his cheerful note, where skylarks now in clouds do rave, half mad with fret and that their souls have by hundreds far more joyous notes than they can manage with their throats. The ploughman's heavy horses run the field as if in fright for fun or stand and laugh in voices shrill or roll upon their backs until the sky is kicked small enough they think then to a pool they go and drink. It is a happy life. Look at crows, swallows, cuckoo, skylark and this ploughman's horses. And within this poem also, in this happy poem also, he has brought in the discordant note of like merchants dressed in black, going to office leisurely, working and coming back. All these natural elements, forces, manifestations live in their own way according to a natural rhythm. It is we, we have lost our rhythm. Now let us see William Wordsworth's poem which was written in 1807. The poem is called The World is Too Much With Us. The world is too much with us, late and soon, getting and pending will lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours, we have given our hearts away a sordid boon. The sea that bears our bosom to the moon, the winds that will be howling at all hours and are up gathered now like sleeping flowers. For this, for everything, we are out of tune. It moves us not, great God, I would rather be a pag and suckled in a creed outworn. So might I standing on this pleasant lee have glimpses that would make me less forlorn, have sight of Proteus rising from the sea, or hear old Triton blow his wreath horn. Proteus is a sea god, Triton is a sea god. Wordsworth says he prefers to be a pagan, that is one who does not believe in Christianity, a primitive man, believing in nature because we have become alienated from nature. That is why he uses that expression, we are out of tune. And also he says, little we see in nature that is ours, our own natural element, water, air, earth, sky, fire and things like that we do not see within ourselves. Without these, we are nowhere. We are made up of the same elements that have made the earth. When we dissociate ourselves and exploit nature, exploit the earth, then what will happen? The world is too much with us because we are running after so many things which are not really required for us. Of course, truths, we have science, we have technology, we have development, everything we have. But then we must not lose our sense where we are going to. Here are some takeaways from this poem or the discussions of various poems that we have read. Realize the basic human need of leisure. Pause and ponder over your pursuit. There is nothing wrong in pursuing something, but pause and ponder. Take rest now and then. Look at yourself and your surroundings. Laugh and smile and be happy. Explore the world with a childlike curiosity. Wonder at the world. Watch the sky, stars and birds and wonder at all these manifestations of divine forces or natural forces. Admire the earth, plants and animals and everything you see and hear appreciate the beauty of nature in so many forms, 
in human forms and other non-human forms. See and say minimum hello to your fellow human beings. When you say hello, naturally some smile comes, you make the day bright for yourself and for everybody else. Here is a summary of what we have seen so far. We looked into the objectives of discussing W. H. Davies poem. We started with W. H. Davies life and works, moved on to read his poem A Plain Life, discussed a leisure, we attempted singing of this poem as well. We paid attention to the theme, form, language and literary devices in the poem. We also spent some time on understanding the human relationships and reflections on life that we can get from this poem. Further, we also read W. H. Davies poem A Happy Life and moved on to read William Wordsworth's poem The World is Too Much with Us and compared it with Davies' poem Leisure. If we are out of tune with ourselves with nature, then we would not have life. Certain takeaways we looked into it. The most important one is leisure is a basic human need like water, oxygen and heat, so many other things. We have to realize it and help ourselves. There are many journals of leisure studies in academics. You will be surprised to see that there is a leisure studies journal from Rutledge. It is published by an association for leisure studies. Here are two references for you. Please go through them and help yourself to understand more of W. H. Davies and his iconic poem, Leisure.